Hi, my name is Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God. And today I'm going to go over the Blood Covenant. The Blood Covenant is really, really important and it'll open up your eyes to everything that the blood of Jesus paid for us to have. <clears throat> if you take a look up here, the Blood Covenant was between two peoples or two groups and the purpose was to exchange strengths and weaknesses. Now, the Old Testament of the Bible is really a covenant. There were about four different covenants in uh, the Old Testament. The one that we're most concerned about is the Abrahamic covenant. And that's what we're going to be talking about because that is our covenant. Um, the, there were, well, let me just go and explain this. Um, whenever one covenant partner did, the other one was, would be will, must be willing to do. That's part of the covenant. And the covenant was between Abraham and his seed, which is Genesis 12, 16, 10, and uh, I'll break down past that. And then Genesis 3, 9 um, says that we are Abraham's seed. So the covenant, from, covenant went from uh, the parent to child to child to child. It was never, uh, when they died, it, it kept on going. Uh, and the covenant really was between God and Jesus. <clears throat> but Abraham got in the covenant through Jesus. Now, um, in the covenant, Abraham uh, was asked to sacrifice his son, and the reason that was because God was planning on sacrificing his son. What one ha uh, was willing to do, the other one had to be willing to do, and that's in Hebrew. And a covenant, what you did was you took two people, maybe one was a good farmer uh, and one was a good um, hunter, and so they exchanged um, their weaknesses and their um, strengths. The farmer gave his uh, crops to the warriors, and the warriors fought for them. And so they exchanged that. But as uh, when and the two groups became one group, they exchanged weapons as a symbol of their. Um, let me move this over here. They weapons as a symbol of their giving to each other their strengths and now your enemies are my enemies that's Ephesians 6 we have the whole armor of God they also um, exchange coats as a symbol of authority uh, that all I have is yours and all you have is mine that's Matthew 28 18 20 and Mark 16 15 and 20 and then they also exchange names and they would cut themselves and they would intermingle their blood to show their unity uh, that was part of the circumcision in the Old Covenant was uh, cutting themselves and uh, then becoming uh, one uh, because they they shed blood. Now the blood that was shed on God's side was uh, Jesus and on man's side was the circumcision. Uh, and we also bear the name of Jesus. That's our exchanging of names which is Ephesians 3.14 and Luke 10.17. Then they sacrificed an animal and they walked through the blood in the middle of the blood uh, pronouncing curses and you can read this in the Old Testament uh, how uh, Abraham uh, sacrificed uh, sacrifice animal then split his carcass in half and God came and walked through it um, each person pronounced blessing and cursing and promises on each other uh, Deuteronomy 28 1 through 14 each group pronounced curses and penalty to each other and death okay let's see pronounced blessing and cursing okay each person, and then this is each. Um, and here's uh, the scriptures: Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 46, Galatians 3, 13, says to redeem from all these curses. And you can read those curses in Deuteronomy 28, and remember that you're redeemed from those curses. Then they had a covenant meal together, which is bread and wine, and today is what we call communion. It showed down their willingness to showed their willingness to lay down their lives for each other. In Matthew 26, 26 through 28. The bread represented uh, their flesh and the wine, their blood, and that's that's why we call, we call it communion today. And when we remember the new covenant, which was sealed in the sacrificial blood of the Lamb of Jesus, that's Hebrews seven thirty seven twenty two. Um, and this is kind of how it went down. Um, in the Old Testament, God made a covenant called the Abraham covenant, covenant with Abraham, and um, that is really what Passover, Good Friday, and communion is all about. That covenant and that promise to protect his partners. Uh, the uh, Israelites would not let the Jewish Israel when uh, not the Israelites when the Egyptians would not let the Israelites go. 
um, they had all the plagues, and each plague, uh, the um, Jews, the Israelites, were separated from the bad stuff that happened to um, the people that was persecuting them, the Egyptians. And the last plague is the firstborn death, and Jesus was the firstborn, and that and um, the Passover is the protection that his covenant partners had against the curse that was going to come on the Egyptians. The firstborn uh, death plague killed all the firstborn of all the animals and all the people. And that was uh, like a forerunner or a shadow of Jesus being the firstborn. Um, and what they were told to do is take their sacrificial lamb and sacrifice and smear the blood on the doorpost. And when they smeared the blood on the doorway, the death angel saw the sign of the blood covenant of the blood. And um, in other words, somebody had already died in that house, and death had already happened, so he could not harm them. And that's what Passover is. The death angel passed over the houses that had the blood on, which was a shadow of the blood of Jesus. And then come to Good Friday is when Jesus became our Passover lamb and was sacrificed to us. And Easter is when Jesus ro rose from the grave after paying the price for our sins, for breaking the covenant, which punishment is death. And he became the last sacrifice. Therefore, he fulfilled all the law of the old covenant. So he now enforced the new covenant, which was the Abrahamic blessings, and uh, which is and the new covenant is all about the Spirit living in us, and are the words that we speak out of our mouth. And Jesus fulfilled the old to bring in the new. He was the sacrificial lamb. And um, but we still get the blessings of the Abrahamic covenant because we're his seed. And when we ask Jesus to come into our heart, we're receiving that blood sacrifice and we become covenant partners with God. All our sins are forgiven past, present, and future because our sacrifice is a forever sacrifice. And then we come to communion today, which in the Old Testament and today was a seal. Uh, it sealed the deal. Um, when we take communion today, we're remembering that Jesus is death. And what his death did was he made us a spot uh, without spot and wrinkle. It forgave us for all our sins. We can tell this back to God. And when we take the body and we receive healing uh, for and healing strength and renews our youth by receiving communion. And when we drink a cup of of his blood, which is represented by the wine, we receive freedom from our sins, from the curse, and from condemnation. And um, condemnation is what the devil puts on us when we sin. He tries to bring condemnation on us and it weakens us, and it makes us not walk in in everything Jesus paid for us to have because we're feeling condemned and worthless. But Jesus made us worthy through the blood. And communion can be taken any time, any place. I've done it with water crackers and, and uh, tomato juice and grape juice and anything at any time. In fact, I try to take it every morning. God told me to take it every morning like I take my vitamins because he said when you eat and drink my blood, um, you're getting strength. You're eating and partaking of Jesus. You're getting strength. And uh, communion is for everybody. And you can get a copy of this. Um, you can get a copy of this um, poster on my website and you use it for teaching my website ribbons the clown dot com um, you can get a poster and you're free to you know use it for witnessing teaching or whatever you like and my name is Robin Bremer and you're watching walks with God and that was an illustration to help you understand by seeing uh, about the blood covenant Easter communion a good Friday and um, that's that's it <laughs>